Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. So I saw the Jeff 77's Diluc quick guide the other day and needless to say as a Diluc main it was very painful to watch. And Mr. Ziox will never make a guide so here I am making one myself. I will say though my primary focus in this guide will be Diluc and his team options rather than the artifacts and weapons because those are pretty simple I will quickly go over them. But before we get into it, I would like to say thank you to all of you that watched my last video. I was not expecting that many views. Like, I uploaded it on Monday, I was expecting 3 or 4 views. I woke up on Tuesday and it was like 30 40 views, so 10 times more than my expectations. But then I woke up on Wednesday and almost 600 views, oh my god. And you guys even left comments, so shout out to everyone who left the comment. Like honestly, I'm very very surprised because that was not even an actual objective analysis video. I mean it kind of was but it mostly was my subjective opinion and my grievances with Xianyun. But if I'm being a little objective here then I will say Xianyun will definitely raise Diluc's floor. In terms of power level, I just don't see her raising the ceiling, that's all. But let's save that for when Xianyun actually releases. Now I would say though, before we get into the guide, it's not really possible for me to fit almost every single team variation that's out there in a single video. So if there are some variations that I do not include on this video or things that I do not mention in this video, it's either because I think they are not worth the effort or I just forgot about them. So make sure to leave a comment. So let's start the guide. In terms of artifacts, there's really only three options for Diluc. First is the Crimson Witch of Flames, obviously, the second is Gilded Dreams, and third is Marisha Se Hunter. The artifacts are pretty straightforward. You use Crimson Witch everywhere else. If you don't have a good Crimson Witch of Flames, then you can go Gilded Dreams in his way, melt all Burgeon teams. But if you're using Farina, then go Marisha Se, that's it. Now, in terms of artifact stats, you always want to go with Pyro Damage Goblet and Crit Rate or Crit Damage Circulate, depending on which one you need more to make a balanced ratio. However, with the sands, it's kind of a little tricky. It honestly just depends upon your team buffs. If you have a lot of attack with your team buffs, then you should go EM sands. And if you have a lot of EM buffs in your team, then you should go attack sands. I personally do not run EM sands, I run attack sands because I have an okay-ish amount of EM within my substats. And then I also have C2 Kazoa and Bennett on Instructor giving me more elemental mastery. And for Vape and Melt, Elemental Mastery will fall off pretty hard after 300 or 400 EM, so the attack percent gives him better result. I will say though, it doesn't really matter that much whether you go with Attack Sands or EM Sands, your damage is going to be very similar. But if you do wish to min-max, then I would recommend you use the Optimizer for your specific case. For the weapons, uh, Diluc is not really a character that's reliant on his weapons. I mean, it's not because he is good with every single weapon, it's more like there are not really that many good clay modes. Like you can probably understand what I'm trying to say here when you consider that his best option in terms of DPS is a 4 star battle pass weapon, the R5 Serpent Spine. For the 5 star options, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The Wolf's Greystone and Unforged will be about the same. The Red Hound will be slightly better depending on your attack buffs. And the Bacon will also be similar to Red Hound in performance. Now in terms of 4 stars, I already said that Serpent Spine at R5 is his highest damage ceiling option. But for free to play options, you can go with the Mailed Flower if you have it. If you do not, then just use the Fountain Craftable. In Vape, however, a High Refined Variant Slasher is also very good. Now let's get into the teams. There will mainly be 4 types of Diluc teams you can play. First is the Virgin team, second is the Mono Pyro, third is Vape, and fourth is Melt. There will be however sub archetypes within these teams, for example with Vape or Melt you can also include Dragon Strike with them within a few variations or you can play over Vape for example or you can play Diluc as a driver for your Hydro unit like Furina or your Cryo unit like Rosario or Kaya to get their Vape Riser Melts. Diluc as a reverse Melt enabler is not very good though, I will tell you that much <laughs> but with Furina it actually kind of does work better. But I do not recommend any of those because Shangli exists. Let's first start off with the Mono Pyro, the simplest one of them all. You pair your Diluc with an Animo unit, Bennett, and Shangling, and that's it. Just play around. There's no really any kind of difficult soil setups you have to do. It's just one element that you have to soil, so it's pretty easy. And you just make sure to snapshot Bennett's buff on Shangling's Pyro Nado, and that's about it. You can just go Unga Bunga and mash your buttons, it will work. Now let's get into the Burgeon archetype. Now there are mainly three types of teams you can do here. 
First will be double pyro where your Bennett C6 helps your Diluc to get a better uptime on his pyro infusion on his normal attacks and also act as a healer because Burchin does self damage. I would like to mention first though that no matter which archetype you choose, make sure your Hydro is Syncho because Yelan's Hydro application is not enough. I mean it is enough but you will feel the downgrade very much. This is because Burgeon teams tend to trigger burning on enemies which is 2 units of pyro. I mean it's not 2 units of pyro but it acts like 2 units of pyro so you will need a lot of hydro in order to put out that burning and then generate seeds as well. The second team which is my least favorite one of the Burgeon sub archetypes is the double dendro. Now why do I not like double dendro? It's because the more dendro aura actually aids in prolonging the burning and you need even more hydro to break through the burning and generate more seeds. You, it's playable, you can do it, but honestly I would not recommend it. So let's move on to the third virgin sub archetype, which is actually my favorite and it's double hydro. Now in this team you can actually run Yelan, but your second hydro also needs to be applying some form of hydro, like Kokomi is good enough for that. But if you are pairing with like Mona or Barbara, then no, that's not going to work very well. There are mainly two ways to build a team like this. You can either put your healer in your dendro slot, so like someone like Baiju, or if you can put your healer in the hydro slot, like I mentioned, Kokumi. So try to mix and match these combos and see what works for you. Now let's get into the more juicy part, which is the wave teams. The primary structure of a wave team will be an animal unit, Diluc, a second pyro unit to allow you to get your VV, and a hydro unit. The Anima option will generally be Sucrose or Kazuha, the Pyro option will generally be Bennett and your Hydro option is mainly one of the three Singcho, Yelan or Furina. However, there are other Hydro options you can use like Diluc can even whip everything even with Barbara. <laughs> so if you want to do that, sure go ahead, but it's not really a recommended option. Other Hydro options that are good with him though include Mona and Kokomi. I do not have Kokomi so I will not be able to show anything with her but it's basically pretty simple you just keep refreshing her jellyfish and let Dilu wave you can also give her TDS if you want and then pass the buff. I will be covering the main hydro options that I think are actually worth using and make a good team with Dilu. For the animal options it really depends upon your preference if you want to use Sucrose or Kazuha both have their own advantages and disadvantages for example against a C0 Kazuha Sucrose does give you a better buff for both your Diluc and your Singcho to hit bigger numbers. Kazuha on the other hand will give you better personal damage and a better grouping. Keep, do keep in mind that when I do show you the teams and their rotations, my Bennett is C6 and if you do not have C6 Bennett, that's completely okay. You can just use Deluxe Burst first instead of using it at the last like I do. However, I will recommend you activate your Bennett C6 if you want to play Deluxe because it significantly improves the quality of life and your combos. Now let's get into the Hydro options. So first off is obviously Singcho, the premier Hydro unit. You can use both Sucrose and Kazuha in his teams and you can easily double swerve as well. The main thing to keep in mind with Singcho teams is his rain swords that can mess with your swirl setup so you have to play around with that. Also double swirling is a very important skill to have for playing these kinds of teams because it greatly increases your team's overall DPS. There's two main types of rotations you can do with Singcho. One is if you have like a multi-wave content where the first wave is not that tanky then you can do a quad wave setup with Singcho's E so you can unload like a lot of damage outright and delete that wave and then continue with your rotation. However, it will not be very practical to use it every single time. In that case, you will be using a double wave setup. Singcho's burst does last a very long time, almost 20 seconds because of the hit lag. So you can actually fit in two Dilu combos within your rotation, two fast Dilu combos to be precise. Although you will not have your other buffs like your VV or your Bennett's buff when you are doing your second combo on Dilu, it is possible to however refresh your VV and your Animo units buff when you are doing the second Dilu combo. However, I would not recommend it. That's a very min-max rotation. Now getting into the second Hydro option, Yelan, this team is also known as the Premium Vape when you replace Sucrose with Kazuha and honestly in this team I feel like she doesn't work as good as Kazuha does. But that is not to say that you cannot play Sucrose, she is still very good in this team. There are two types of rotations you can do in this Premium Vape team. First is without Kazuha's burst. Into the wind. Bust it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Retribution! 
Attention! And the second is with Kazuo's burst. You will use the latter if you have C to Kazuha like me. If you don't, then you can use the first setup and ignore re energy recharge on Kazuha. This team is currently my personal favorite babe team for the look. It has a really good damage and I don't know, it just feels satisfying to play. Now Yelan does need a lot of energy recharge in this kind of team. However, there is a way to cheat out having to build that much EA. Basically, what you do is you consider the fact that Yelan's burst only lasts 15 seconds but has a 20 second cooldown. So as soon as it ends, you have a 5 second of downtime. You can use this downtime to do an extra Yelan E and fill up her burst. And then you can also use the downtime to do one or two E's on your Kazuha or Bennett to be able to recharge their burst as well. So you won't need as much ER as you otherwise would. And then you restart your rotation as usual and by the time you have to swap back to Yolan to cast her E vape, then you will have it back. Now of course you can also not vape Yolan Z. I mean it's a nice 80k to 100k damage in my opinion so I personally like to do it but if you don't want to then you are free to not do it. In that case, just pre-funnel your particles in Yelan Z by doing EQ like you normally would in other types of teams. Now let's move on to the more spicy header option which is Furina. The DPS output of this team is very close to the Yelan premium wave team as well so it's up to your preference or the units you have available. The setup is fairly simple however the timing is very important because Furina does not apply Hydro at fixed intervals. For a couple seconds it's very fast, for a couple seconds it goes very slow so yeah you have to keep that in mind. As far as I know it's possible to infuse your Kazuha's burst with Pyro and still be able to maintain Hydro on all of your enemies when you are in AoE. But if you are in single target then I would recommend infusing his burst with Hydro or just not using it at all if you don't have C2. Light it up. Another Hydro option I would like to mention which is actually pretty good but often considered a meme is Mona. Mona has just enough of time for you to get all your Diluc combos vapes and she greatly buffs your damage as well and in this team Sucrose is very much an upgrade to Kazuha because of her more valuable buffs. The only real issue I have with this team is Mona's energy requirements are kind of too bad so you wanna use Fab on her you can go TTDS if you somehow manage to get enough energy recharge then sure but like go fast. Now let's get into the melt teams. Now melt teams tend to be a lot strict with your combo timings so uh, having C6 Bennett here greatly improves your DPS and your quality of life. But if you don't have it you can still play it it will just not be as good and honestly I would not recommend you try melt teams before you get C6 Bennett. Now wave team does have a higher single target damage output despite having good AoE coverage nonetheless. That's because Sing Cho, Yelan and Furina all of them only have a single target damage output. However, many teams do not suffer from this weakness. In exchange for lower single target damage, you get better AoE. Now let's talk about the melt team that the Jeff used in that Dilu quick guide which is sparing Kazu and Rosaria. I strongly recommend you do not do that because it's one of the worst pairs. If you want to use Rosaria, then change your Animo option to Sucrose. And if you want to use Kazuha, then change your Cryo option to Kaya. Or you know, some other Cryo option that I will mention shortly. The reason you do not want to pair Kazuo and Rosaria together is because their cryo application kind of falls out of sync in midway and then you will be left with awkward timings with your melts. Like if you saw the Jeff's video then you know what I'm talking about. It was kind of scout for him to do. Now let's start off with the team variations. First off using Rosaria as your cryo option. In this case I strongly recommend you pair her up with Sucrose. 
However, keep in mind that the rotation will change depending upon if you have C2 sucrose or if you do not have C2 sucrose like me. Primarily, this team is played with C2 sucrose. However, I do not have it, so I have an alternate rotation you can do. But obviously, it's not as good as the C2 sucrose variation. <laughs> Moving on to my favorite Karai option to pair up with Dilu, Kaya, Mr. Balls. Now he works with Kazuha a lot better which is why I like him more because I also like Kazuha more. And he does give you a higher ceiling if you vertically invest into him because he can dish out a lot of damage. Kaya's E also applies to units of Kayo so you can remove Pyro Aura easily if you sometimes mess up your rotations. Next Cryo option which I do not like personally that much is Ganyu mainly because of her RNG in the Cryo application. The setup is fairly simple and the team is easy to play as well. However, I just do not like it because sometimes even with the same setup you might miss some merits because Ganyu's burst just refuses to apply Cryo. Another cry option that I do not like to use at all is Ayaka. Sure, you can use her, she is easy to use. Her burst supplies a lot of cryo very fast, so you can easily melt with Diluc as well. But she needs a lot of energy recharge in order to function properly in such a team. And then there's also the issue like you will feel like she's carrying the team <laughs> because she alone will push your team from 50k DPS to 80k DPS by herself. Anyways, Another cry option that I personally like and would recommend that you try to use is Layla. Now, Layla is surprisingly good with Diluc. Not only her star mechanic does work better because Diluc's skill has three uses, but also her cry application is pretty good and with her C4 she can also give you a meaningful buff. And her burst cost is only 40, very easy to recharge and then you also consider the fact that she gives you a very good shield for the Diluc. Next up, the elephant in the room, Diona. Now, she is terrible for a <laughs> regular merit team. However, for Dragon Strike, she is really the only option. Her cry application is pretty bad, but her shield gives you the movement speed buff you need in order to do Dragon Strike. And then her C6 also gives you a very big 200 EM buff. Now, in this team, Sucrose with C2 is better than Kazuha because you can get another extra merit and her buff is just more valuable overall. So yeah, but I do not have C2 Sucrose, so I use Kazuha. Now Double Cryo is also a fairly good option for a mill team because you can easily get your merits, you don't have to worry about VV setups at all, so yeah, pretty easy to use. However, do not use the Rosari and Diona together to do Dragon Strike. It works, but it's not like very good because the timing is very awkward. I have tested it a lot and it's really awkward, do not use it. So that will be it for the mainstream Diluc teams. Some honorable mentions are Overload team with Chevrus or Overwave team with Fischl or Raiden as Electro support. But if you want to use Raiden for just her E and to support Diluc to get in overloads, then I will sure. <laughs> but I would only recommend you go with Fischl. Another honorable mention is Double Hydro where Diluc get carried. Yeah, not gonna sugarcoat it, he gets carried. And then there's also some other wave variations where you can use double Animo or instead of your Animo unit, you can use Diona Shield to be able to do Dragon Strike. Not really that good to be honest, I would not recommend it. Your overall damage output remains the same if not lower. If you do wanna play a Dragon Strike wave team, then the best option for it is unironically Amber with C6 and LG. So she can provide you with Pyro to enable your VV and she can also give you a movement speed buff so you can do Dragon Strike. So yeah, that will be about it for my Diluc guide. Let me know if I missed anything important. And now I can finally sleep in peace knowing that the world does have a good Diluc guide. <laughs> But yeah, jokes aside, no hit to the Jeff, oh, you can't expect everyone to know everything. I, I don't know a lot of things that he does and he probably doesn't know about Diluc as much. So yeah, what matters is that at least the Jeff tried to make a guide unlike a certain someone who promised to give us a guide but hasn't given it for like 3 centuries now. So yeah, yeah, so that's about it. Like and subscribe. Oh, and before I go, make sure you press that bell button because once 4.4 drops, I'm gonna be dropping banger after banger. I will pull Xianyun and gaming when they release and I will make a full analysis video of them. And I will also make a, you know, that mystery messiah ultimate carry for Xianyun, his updated guide. 
सो सी ए नेक्स्ट टाइम Cheryl on the beat.